It's time for the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. On your radio at AM 940 and online at MyWithersRadio.com. Recognized by the Illinois Broadcasters Association as one of the premier radio feature programs in the state, you're about to roam the region with more guests and content courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. Live from the powerhouse, the Saturday Sports Show starts now. And good morning. Glad to have you with us for the Saturday Sports Show. WMIX online today at MyWithersRadio.com. Busy program, busy lineup for you here today on what continues to be the end of the fall regular season for the most part as football and volleyball have wound down this week. Some regionals going on today, of course, in cross country and boys soccer. And, of course, we will preview possible postseason assignments, of course, for high school football. We'll talk with Jared Shaner of the Mount Vernon Rams. Johnny Hollis is the Cesar Valier Waltonville Woodlawn Red Devils. His team headed to the postseason this year, but we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to talk to some of the radio guys, not only with our company, but some others as well. We'll talk to Jeffrey Drake, voice of the Harrisburg Bulldogs. We will talk with Steve Merrick. He is the voice of the Ducoin Indians a long time. Bruce Dickey, of course, is the voice of the Fairfield Mules. We'll also have Jeff Harrison on to talk Mount Vernon Rams soccer. That will be in the 9 o'clock hour. The Mount Vernon Rams, of course, We'll be battling for a regional championship today against the Carbondale Terriers. We will also have Clint Turner on. He'll join us before you know it. We'll talk Mount Vernon running Rams cross country as they head to the Triad Regional today. Overall, a busy lineup is presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Busy night of high school football last night as well. We'll get to our scoreboard as soon as we can here on the Saturday Sports Show. For your pleasure at the moment, though, you can find them on Facebook, facebook.com. Slash WMIX Sports. We need to slip out for a quick break. When we come back, we will talk Mount Vernon running Rams cross country, of course, with a longtime running Rams head coach Clint Turner. That's to come here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. Again, it's more than a hospital. That's what health care should be. Back after these. I know you've heard about mortgage rates being all time lows, but have you done anything about it yet? Hi, I'm Rick Pig, mortgage lender at Community First Bank. There's never been a better time at buying a home or refinancing an existing mortgage. The sooner you act, the more you save. And we'll be there to help you through every step of the way. For more information, visit us at comfirstbank.net or stop by one of our five locations. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency... Call 911. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIXMyWithersRadio.com. We're glad to have you with us, of course. Presented by Crossroads Community Hospitals, more than a hospital. That's what health care should be. We'll get to Clint Turner here in just a moment on the Saturday Sports Show as... It's the beauty of live radio. Dial the wrong number. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you're limited to time. And that's what happened there. But the running Rams, of course, in South 7 Conference meet just a, couple, just a week ago, actually finished in second place in the South 7 Conference. Fell behind two points to the Carbondale Terriers. And you, you look at their top finishers. And, of course, David Monert was your conference champ, finishing in first place. Terriers just had too many in the top ten for the Rams to win that conference championship. Running that one at Carbondale, the Rams are at try today. And, as always, that is a tough 2A regional. Yeah, and again, you got to get on the bus and got to drive quite a long way up the Triad. You and I know that drive very well, having done that earlier this year for football, and then get up on the bus and head on down that road. It's a very interesting thing. Is that uh, you got to get up early, got to run. This is a beautiful morning for cross country running. Of course, they the teams and individuals will advance to the sectional next week, two weeks from today, Detweiler Park in East Peoria for the IHSA state cross country meet. So for the Mount Vernon Rams, who have had lots of success this year, and also the Lady Rams, you know, this is an opportunity for them to go out and shine, not only as individuals, but more importantly as a team as well. Well, and exactly, and this is crunch time for everybody. Obviously, we are down to that final part of the fall sports seasons where we are in the postseason for every sport. Some have already begun, some have already wound down, but you take a look at boys cross country, girls cross country, they used to get heated up today, and you take a look at these regional and sectional assignments, and, and there are a lot of teams. That triad regional, of course, is loaded for Bear. And again, duly noted, very loaded, and 
it's one of those deals where you look at it and you go, oh, my, you know, what's going to happen? But Mount Vernon, again, this is where the beauty of Clint Turner is, is that he does a really good job of scheduling meets in different places with teams and people you're going to run against in the postseason. Well, and this is one of those things where we're trying to catch up with Clint Turner this morning. They are on the bus headed to Troy to get to Triad, and sometimes along I-64, obviously, not necessarily the most friendly accommodations. Uh, on your way to the Metro East. So we'll try to catch up with Clint Turner here on the Saturday Sports Show, but you do take a look at things. And, Danny, we've had other cross-country coaches on, and they talk about how blessed Mount Vernon is with Clint Turner on the boys' side and Connie Hari Blair on the girls' side and just the runners that continue to be cranked out at Mount Vernon High School and the success that continues to come to the cross-country programs. And I think in Class 2A, though it's tough, you have Cahokia, more known for sprinting, of course, in the track season. Uh, east side the same way, but you have Carbondale, Centralia, Highland, Marion, Mascuta, Triad, Waterloo, as we've talked about in that regional. Mm-hmm. And, and you really think, you know, in the and I'm going by the past here, you think back to like the Marions and, and Carbondales and Centralias of the world, and that's always tough. Oh, yeah. I and mean, you look at the fact that you advance out of there to the Cater MacArthur sectional next week, another long drive. But again, you'll be running against teams from the Champaign area, Danville area, also Springfield as well next week in the sectional. Of course, we welcome now Clint Turner to the program. Coach Turner, good morning. How are you guys? Y'all, you know, we're doing pretty good. And I, and I have to imagine second place finish in the South 7 Conference last week. You must be doing pretty good as well. David Moderate, of course, the individual conference champion. But it, tell us a little bit, how often is a conference race that close where 30 wins it and 32 is second place? Is there usually a two-point differential like that? Uh, well, it doesn't taste very good when you're on the wrong <laughs> side of it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> exactly. And... Uh, Two out of the last three conference meets, um, we had one even closer. Two years ago, we actually tied at 30 and had to go to the number six runner to determine who was the winner, and their number six was just ahead of our number six, so it was really, really tight. But, um, you know, one of our goals is always to win that conference championship, so when you come up a little short, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Uh, and understandably so. And uh, is, is that a frequent occurrence? I mean, have have has that happened more than just a couple of times, a handful of times, over the past twenty years or so? Well, um, well, to be honest with you, when my first year coaching in '96, I believe we beat Carbondale by a point to win the conference championship. Um, I can remember we Jim Johnson, runner of ours, had been sick all all year, hadn't run but a couple of meets, and we tried to get him as healthy as possible and stuck him in the race, uh, just hoping that we could beat Carbondale, and, and he was able to run well enough where we, ate, we won it by a point there. So, yeah, I mean, there, you know, when you have good teams, and it's been that tight with Carbondale all year, you know, we, we ran a quad meet down there with them earlier in the year, and they beat us by two. I think it was 34-32. Uh, when we match up with them in the bigger meets, we have a tendency to beat them. We were ahead of them at Peoria. We were ahead of them uh, over Edwardsville. In that, uh, that's where David helps us. He's so, you know, he's a top five, top ten guy in just about any meet we go to. So there's where we gain some points on them. We run so even with our number two, three, four, and five guys. Uh, when David. Still finishing in that good spot, it, push, you know, it, it makes for a better sport for us. Speaking of being familiar with teams in this sectional or this regional this afternoon or this morning, I look at the fact that you know you got to do a little scouting. How familiar are you and are your runners with the course today at Triad? Uh, not at all, unfortunately. Uh, I, we brought two guys over last Saturday. We, we came up and watched the. Uh, great school state meet at Salem, and then we drove over. Uh, there was a lot of things going on that Saturday where our kids couldn't go with us to actually get on the course. We planned on running their invitational uh, the week earlier on a Wednesday, and it got stormed out, and they rescheduled it on a Saturday, the next Saturday, but we were in Peoria, so we just weren't able to get on the course. Um, but, you know, with our kids that did get to see it, myself, there is, it's not a complicated course. 
there isn't any kind of overlap or anything like that that could, you know, confuse somebody. Uh, I, I think we'll be fine. Uh, I mean, like can't get lost on it. And as much as anything in this region, you just want to have a good enough day to where you can qualify and get out. Ten teams and seven teams move on to the sectional. So, uh, you know, it's just a matter of running well and, and uh, getting out of there without getting anybody hurt. So. And speaking of running, today's a, a cross-country course, you know, and then the next week if you advance to the section or whoever, you get to run at a golf course. What's the difference, you know, running like a regular cross-country course, maybe on a fairground or a park or whatever, compared to running on a golf course in this situation? Well, and then our sectional course there at Decatur is North Pickford golf course uh, on the north side of Decatur, and it's on a golf course. You know, it, it's... Some golf courses can be hilly, and this particular one is not. It's very flat. So it's a fast course. Um, it's basically two laps. They, they set out a mile and a half uh, little course, and you just run it twice. So it's not complicated. Um, the, the problem that I have with it is uh, we can't get on the course ever. You know, you like to run those courses get some experience on them, and they run one invitational during the week with about five or six teams, and that's it. You know, obviously the golf course is in the distance of golf and not cross country, so yeah, you, you don't they have, have your, to shut the whole thing down just for us to run. Uh, you don't have your runners go out like the Green Hills and run between guys hitting golf balls and gals to get them ready? Uh, no, <laughs> no. I tell you, I've, I've seen a few, a few golf balls hit individuals before, and it's not pretty. Uh, no, it is not, not. something you <laughs> something you want to do. I know you're busy this morning. Before we get to our WMIX Sports Question of the Week, one one off topic question before we get to that. Are you doing uh-huh. okay after the Yankees this week? Uh, well, you know, I kind of live and die with the Cardinals. I don't really live and die with the Yankees. I root for them, but uh, I didn't lose any sleep. No. That's good to know because they need you every step of the way today in that triad regional. But our WMIX Sports Question of the Week this week, say you're channel surfing, there's there's always that one movie we all have that no matter how many times we've seen it, if it's on TV, we have to stop and watch it. What yeah. is that movie for you? Patton. Really? George George yeah. B. Scott and Patton. Yeah, I bet I've seen it 50 times, and I'll watch it 51 <laughs> the next time it's on. That's a good movie there. Nobody understands. Well, and what's yeah. funny is I have it on a DVD, but if it's on the television, I still watch it. It seems like having the DVD is a requisite requirement to stopping <laughs> and watching it on television, I think. But, Coach yeah. Turner, best of luck to the Mount Vernon running Rams today. Hopefully they can come home regional champs. Well, we're going to give it a shot. We just pulled in in triad right now. We're going to unload and go to work. You guys have a great day, and hopefully we can talk to you again next week about the regional champs. Good luck. Great. Thank you, sir. That is Co- Coach Clint Turner, Mount Vernon Running Rams, and, of course, David Moderate and the boys and the girls as well headed out there to try to win a regional championship today. We'd love to see him do it. We need to talk to, of course, Mount Vernon Rams head football coach Jared Shaner. We'll talk to him after a quick break here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. Check out Facebook, facebook.com slash Sports. We have all the scores on there. We'll get to them in just a moment. Back after these. Follow the adventures of a cherished Rivertown youth who always seems to find mischief with the Ren Lake College Theater's production of Tom Sawyer, based on the novel by Mark Twain. See local thespians in this delightful presentation. The curtain goes up at 7 p.m. on November 8th, 9th, and 10th with a special 2 p.m. matinee on November 11th. Tickets are just $12 and are available now at the Ren Lake College Theater box office at rlc.edu or by calling toll-free 800-369-5321, extension 12. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a Medical emergency, call 911. 
Welcome back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, MyWithersRadio.com. Glad to have you with us, of course, presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. That's what health care should be. Welcome to the program now. I'm Alfred and Rams head coach, Jared Shaner. Coach Shaner, good morning. Obviously, I, n- I know you wish things had gone a little bit differently last night at Mount Carmel. The Rams fall on that one, 42-7. But under the circumstances, I would have never known that team going into last night was was 0-8. They played their hearts out. They played tough. And I really thought, for all intents and purposes, gave the Golden Aces one hell of a game. Yeah, um, at, at times I think we did. And, you know, it's tough when you're, when you're struggling like that to um, keep energy up. Pushing up with, um, you know, Kids um, who are who are disappointed, and uh, well, I thought that the kids did a pretty good job. You're right. Big plays last night for Mount Carmel. I thought in the first quarter, only down six nothing, and only twenty at half. Seemed to me your kids did a very good job defensively. Again, as a unit throughout the year, coming together, gelling together, being a very good defensive unit, and really held Mount Carmel in check for all for basically most of the ball game. Yeah, um, you know, kind of. Uh, kind of went like back to what we had been at the beginning of the year a couple of times, and you know, we played really well at times defensively. Uh, we, you know, had a lot of tackles for losses, negative plays for them, but unfortunately, we just gave up uh, a few too many big plays too. Um, and that's you know that's why they went to the spread offense because they have some kids that can make plays. And um, you know, we had a couple couple nice plays defensively in the first half at an interception chance for another interception, and you know, at halftime I told the kids, you know, we haven't, we haven't played well, and we're only down 20, we come back and maybe get a score, get a stop at a score, and you know, we're right in it, and um, you know, I think we traded scores with them early in the, the second half, and this wasn't quite good enough. Field conditions seem to me to be decently okay in the in the beginning of the game as the field got tore up a little bit, a little rain this week. Seems to me like your jet sweeps and move, and fast running plays were kind of at a lull, but I thought you guys did a good job of doing some other things, running the football, and then Clayton Reeves throwing the ball pretty well last night for the senior quarterback. Yeah, um, you know, going into the game, I knew that you know running it, especially inside, would be uh, difficult for us there. Um, I've watched several of their films this year, and they're pretty good at stopping inside run stuff and really run run game for that matter. Um, when they've given up some plays this year and some points and through the air, you know, and that's not what uh, you know what we go out and work on day in and day out for an extended period of time. But I thought you know our kids did a pretty good job, and Clayton found um, you know, several different guys last night and um, just kind of moved the ball down the field a little bit, and then it just you know took. Took a couple big shots with uh, Derek Hunter and, um, you know, feel a little bit better than what we had maybe. I look at last night, and, of course, seniors dressing in the last time. It's kind of a bittersweet moment for the seniors, you know, where you get out and you get to play. And, and a lot of your seniors, that will be the last time they dress up and play football at an organized level. Talk about your seniors, especially since it was their last game last night as a Mount Vernon Ram. Well, they're a good group of kids, and, um, you know, we're going to miss them. I, I can't say enough about them. And, you know, I talked to them a little bit after the game last night, and, um, it's you know your last game is emotional. Doesn't matter if it's the ninth game of the year and you have one one, or if it's a state championship and you're fourteen and zero. Um, ultimately, you got uh, you have some kids that have played football for you know anywhere from fifth grade on up through their senior year in high school, and uh, and they're done with that part of their lives. And um, you know that, that that's difficult for for kids to. Um, or to sink in and for them to understand. And, you know, I think we mentioned it before, but, you know, football is unique in that, um, you know, you can go out and you go out swing golf clubs all your life for the most part and pick a couple of basketball and lots of people have basketball hoops in their driveway, um, you know, and things like that. But uh, football, once, you know, these kids are going to turn on their pads on Tuesday and you're literally probably never going to put on a pair of football pads or a helmet and, and go out and play a game that uh, you've invested a lot in and care a lot about. So that can be really difficult. Speaking of that, moving on as the 2012 season ends last night, well, taking on the schedule, technically you probably still got some maintenance, paperwork, and other things to do for 2012, but what's the schedule now as you move into the off season for you and your football program? Yeah, um, well, we've got uh, our coaches. We still have quite a bit of work to do, and, 
um, we've got the end of the year thing where our meetings and um, kind of finalize some things, inventory and all that stuff. But once we move on, then uh, what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of time, um, about a month or so, um, and, and right after Thanksgiving we'll start start having workouts um, one or two days a week. Uh, we'll bring the kids in and lift a little bit, run a little bit, um, and uh, and we'll do that up through Christmas time. And then, you know, beginning of the year, we add another day, typically, and we go two or three days a week. Um, and that's kind of when um, some coaching clinics and things are happening, so we do those types of things. We move on into the spring and, and crank it up a little bit more and, and get ready for summer, and um, that's a great time. Uh, I enjoy obviously the season, um, I, I never want it to end, even when things aren't going well, I like being around the kids every day, And um, but uh, for me, I, I, I get to have a little bit of extra time now, and I go back and watch all of our games again, and really take some detailed notes about um, areas we need to improve, and, and how we improved from last year, and what we can get better at, what we need to work on. Of course, Coach Shaner, I know this probably isn't on your mind whatsoever, but you know by now I'd like to look ahead as far as possible. 2013, any? I know we're coming up on the end of possibly some two-year contracts. Are there any changes to the schedule, maybe week two or week nine? I uh, haven't made any yet. We are, uh, Coach Creel and I are working on that. Um, you know, we just, just sent some emails out the other day and don't have anything finalized. We do have uh, just Rochester's just one more year. Um, the Central State Aid Conference is a, uh, they only have one open week, and then they rotate every two years. So um, we will definitely need a week one opponent. Um, week two with Mosquito, we've talked to them. Um, I think we're going to attempt to, to renew our Mosquito contract. Um, and then we have week two triad. Um, that one's still kind of up in the air. I think uh, um, we're, we're talking to them and maybe a few other people we're looking at. And then week nine is kind of the same where uh, – looking for some opponents and you know I get asked that question quite a bit and um, you know at this point our football program we're probably a little over scheduled um, and football is unique that not everybody makes the postseason so um, it's difficult when you've got you know maybe a state championship in week or state championship team in week one and you know another one that got second place last year in week nine but um, so we're kind of out there looking and um, hopefully we can we can uh, make it work but got to realize other people have contracts and, and everybody's conference is a little bit different as far as what weeks they have open, so it can become a real real challenge. Speaking of out there looking, we're all notorious for channel surfing, and then there's that just, just that one movie that we come across, doesn't matter which channel, which network, we have to stop and watch it. Do you have a movie like that where you just, if you see it on, you have to stop and watch? Uh, yeah, I got seven, actually. I'm not a not a huge movie guy, but uh, I've got a couple, and um, um, not sh- I, uh, I guess, Goodwill Hunting kind of uh, is one that sticks with me, and then probably my favorite that, that takes a, a lot of my sleepless nights, it's on TBS or TNT quite a bit, but I, if I'm flipping through and Braveheart's on, I'm probably, probably up for the next four hours watching it. <laughs> Understandable, Shaner. Both of those are good answers, and I know that uh, I hate to to be talking about the end of the season right now, as do you. But I'm certainly proud of the effort that was put out there on the field this year by the 2012 Mountford and Rams, and we certainly look forward to the good things that are come here in the future. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. That's Jared Shaner, head coach of the Mountford and Rams. Good dude overall, and just great to be here in Mount Vernon. And certainly, nobody is probably more disturbed than, than he right now and sometimes there's things you can do about that sometimes there's things that you can't and that this is just an instance of the latter and certainly not the former and we'll see what happens in 2013 you know that he gets started he has started working on 2013 right now as he wraps up 2012 so there you have it our next guest a little bit more fortunate in the playoff department the Cesar Valera Waltonville Woodlawn Red Devils are six and three on the air big win last night over El Dorado we'll talk with Cesar Valera Waltonville Woodlawn head coach Johnny Hollis after the break this is a Saturday sports show on WMIX online at mywithersradio.com of course you can find the scoreboard from last night on Facebook facebook.com slash WMIX sports we'll get to that at 45 after the hour here on the air we will take a quick break again Crossroads Community Hospital it's more than hospital it's what healthcare should be back after these 
Attention all Medicare Part D pharmacy patients. The annual enrollment period begins earlier this year, October 15th, and ends December 7th. And the Medicine Shop Pharmacy is ready to help you. Stop by or call to make an appointment with Eric Black or Tracy Adams. They'll review your current prescription plan and help you manage your Medicare dollars. Here's pharmacist and pharmacy owner Eric Black. What we offer to our patients is to sit down with them and answer questions that they may have about their medications, really with the end goal of being to maximize their dollars, because that's, after all, what patients really, really want. We'll take appointments, we'll sit down with them, take as long as it takes to help them choose a plan that is effective at meeting their needs. Remember, the good folks at the Medicine Shop Pharmacy are never too busy to take care of you. They look forward to understanding your health care needs and will focus on keeping you well. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy, 2339 Broadway in Mount Vernon. To call to make an appointment, call 618-242-8776. The tradition of fine vehicles and great service continues at Second Chance Auto. They've been providing quality cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs for families like yours for over 32 years. And many are priced under $10,000. Plus, most have a three-month or 3,000-mile warning. Bank rate financing available with instant approval. No gimmicks, no pressure, just honest deals on great vehicles from your friends and neighbors at Second Chance Auto, living and contributing back to the community they serve. Located on Route 142 East in Mount Vernon or call 244-4582. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIXMyWithersRadio.com. Glad to have you with us. Our next guest, his team headed to the postseason, 6-3 and three on the year, the Cesar Valero Waltonville Woodlawn Red Devils. They 28-20 winners over the El Dorado Eagles on the road last night. It's Coach Johnny Hollis. Coach Hollis, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. You tell me a little bit of how you're feeling right now. Rookie head coach going into the postseason, first time in one year, that's all it took, 6-3 and three with these Red Devils. What are your emotions right now? I mean, I'm... You know, as a staff and myself, we're really excited. Um, we're, the year kind of started rough, and we were able to uh, obviously salvage our season and and uh, not just salvage it, but uh, take our team to the postseason. So I've had a lot of good help, and, and the boys have really drawn together as a team. It's been fun. Counting in my unofficial stats, I believe, counting DuCoin this year and yourself, you become the tenth team in the River River Black Diamond South Seven to start the year zero and two, and make the playoffs at zero and two. Looking back now, what was the mood of everybody after an zero and two start down there in your camp? Well, it, it wasn't it wasn't pleasant for any of us. Um, you know, you of course we start the year. I mean, it's tough. We start the year with JC and Chester, and both have been great teams this year. And uh, so, but we knew that. Um, the way our guys had played in both those games, that we had the potential to be a postseason team, uh, and it was just kind of frustrating for a little while trying to figure it out, and um, we just kind of had a hard heart meeting with the guys at the beginning of the year uh, after we went 0-2, and uh, just kind of left the ball in their court, you know, and let them know, hey, the, the potential's in the room, and you guys just got to start playing together as a team and not individuals, and, and uh we said some things in that meeting. <laughs> I didn't know if uh, I'd have some guys walk out on me or what, but we just told them the truth and, and laid it out there, and they responded. Speaking of truth, you had to El Dorado last night. The Red Devils over the years have struggled playing there. It's a very difficult place to play, long bus trip from Sessor. First question is, did you learn the story of hunting for El Dorado Bear yesterday? I did not. Oh. I didn't get a chance to ask okay. anybody about that, but I, I, I do want to know about that. You, uh, Mr. Shelt, Mr. Shadowins are quite knowledgeable in the fact of the El Dorado Bear when you get to that point. <laughs> but anyway, a tough game last night. Back and forth you go on the road. El Dorado's fighting for everything. They started 3-0, and lose, and they're, you know, they're out. The atmosphere, the mood of playing an El Dorado team with what, was, what they had on the line last night. Yeah, I mean, they were, they were angry. You know, I mean, they were they were really ready to play, and like you said, their backs to the wall a little bit. And we told our kids that going in. And I know they're usually a physical team anyway, and they're they have some great size this year too to go along with that. So, you know, we knew we were going to get their best shot, and sure enough, we did the first half. You're one of those teams that a lot of people I don't think give enough credit to and talk about having a lot of veteran kids and and guys that have been around the program four years in a row in the playoffs now understand the situation how important was that experience last night in that road game at El Dorado 
it was very helpful. Um, we've got some kids that have played a lot of downs of football at this point in their career, and and uh, you know just them, you know from freshmen uh, till now, the seniors, um, you know just being a part of that experience uh, and playing on Saturdays for the last you know four years, so uh, three or four years, and it does help. And um, beginning of the game, it was, it was kind of rocky a little bit. We couldn't stop them, and they couldn't stop us, but. And I think that was a huge part of the game last night. I think that's a good point. And um, our guys have kind of been there a little bit and uh, know what it takes to get it done. Score was tied at 20 at the half after the back and forth going on. 15 fumbles on the night with all the turnovers going on. Was it field conditions or was it just solid defenses playing last night? I mean, the defenses were hitting, you know, the other you know the other team in the mouth, both teams. And, and uh, guys were coming in, first guy went in, Good solid hit. The next guy in was ripping and, and stripping the ball, and and uh, I think there was a little bit of nerves going on too because there was something on the line. I think for both teams, you know, we we wanted to punch our ticket for sure and be in and not have to wait on points, and and they obviously were needing a win to be eligible, and so there was a little bit of nerves going on. I think, and uh, with it being the final game of the year, a little bit of nerves, not anymore. As you win last night, twenty eight twenty. Now. Into the playoffs for the fourth year in a row. Probably a very secure Class 3A team now. Any thoughts or ideas as to who you might see or where you might be going next week at this point on Saturday morning? Uh, man, I have no idea. You know, it could be a, you know, you see everything in the world on there. But, um, you know, it could be, uh, I've seen Vandalia a few times and, and uh, some Central Illinois teams and then, you know, we've seen some river-to-river -river teams, and, and uh, I mean, there's an outside chance that we might even, you know, get a black diamond team. You just don't know. It might be like buy-in or something like that. But um, I don't know. We don't know at this point. We're just excited. We're getting the kids together tonight to kind of have a little playoff pairing party and watch the results when they come out and um, just enjoy the moment right now. Coach, obviously I know your focus is a lie elsewhere right now. That's why we're trying to make our question of the week hard but easy this week. Uh, the W Mike Sports <laughs> Social Media Question of the Week this week. We all have that movie that if we're flipping through channels, we're channel surfing, we find this one movie and we have to stop and watch it. What is that movie for you? Man, I, you know, it's hardly ever on, but if it comes on, I'm, I'm glued. It's Rambo, man. Nice. Rambo, that takes me back to my, my days with my dad sitting in the basement watching the movies, you know. So, uh, uh, yeah, that that would be it. A solid choice, and of course, we look forward to previewing your playoff game next week. Good luck to the Red Devils one week from now. All right, man. Thank you, guys. That is Coach Johnny Hollis, Cesar Valerio Waltonville Woodlawn. They are six and three on the year, twenty eight twenty winners over El Dorado. Did a heck of a job preserving their future last night on the road in Saline County. We'll have to tell everybody the bear story sometime if we can get clearance on that and get it declassified. Well, we can ask the bear story at nine o'clock. <laughs> Then we actually then we well, go into it last actually, week. Yeah, we've actually mentioned the bear story and everything, the license plate and everything else. So <laughs> it has been mentioned nothing, before. Nothing beats the sh subtle shadow and drops of it, though. Talking right. about a bear wearing wearing a license plate somewhere in Saline County, but yeah. Uh, that said, we'll have to fully tell that story sometime. Yeah. I can't do it without. I can't think about it without laughing. But well, we have plenty more to come here on the Saturday Sports Show. Uh, let's that see. story has gotten so many miles on. They've had to change a set of tires on it three times. You were absolutely right about that. We'll have voice of the Harrisburg Bulldogs on Sister Station WEBQ. Also, coincidentally, news director for Sister Stations WQRL, WMCL, WISH. Come, Jeffrey Drake coming up here in just a moment. For that, I know it's not quite 45 yet. Yeah, but we have We really need to get now. to our scores. Well, we have some scores written around here, and we'll go right through them now. South Seven Teams, Mount Carmel beat Mount Vernon, as we know, 42-7. Altoff dominates Triad, 38-14. The Knights are out of the playoffs at 4-5. and five. Hales Franciscan beats Cokie at 13 nothing. Cokie is out of the playoffs, 4-5. and five. Harrisburg over Carbondale, 40-19. Carbondale out of the playoffs, 4-5. and five. Centralia goes undefeated, beating Mascuta, 47 20. River to River teams. Benton beat Carlisle 33-23. Heron gets to five wins with a 37-28 win over AJ. Ballard Memorial out of Kentucky beat Massac 42-14. DuCoin goes to 7-2 beating Murphy 19-8. Carterville over West Frankfurt 40-8. Columbia over Nashville 49-6. Pinckneyville goes to 4-5 on the year beating Dupo 19-12. And Sparta breaks I believe a 35 game losing streak 
in beating Redbud last night, 40-14. to Redbud playoffs last year, lost to Benton in the first round this year, 0-9. Black Diamond, Carmi go, gets to 6-3, and beating E.T., 50-22. to Chester shuts out Hamco, 55 nothing. Fairfield over CZR, 52-14. And the Red Devils, as we mentioned, beat Eldorado, 28-20. We'll stretch out a little bit as we go here. Breeze Central over East Altonwood River, 42-36. Breeze Central is in at 5-4. and Salem beats Freeburg, 30-6. And Mount Ollie beat Westland 27 to 7. It was in the Mississippi Valley, Bethalto over Mount Zion, an exciting game, 35 34. Charleston over Highland, the 46 21. Jerseyville over Mattoon, 28 17. Modern Day beat Waterloo. That was an interesting score. Modern Day wins 13 to 6. Southwestern Conference last night, East St. Louis beat Alton, 53 14. It was O'Fallon over Belleville East. 33 to 7. Belleville East out of the playoffs after a couple of deep runs the last couple of years. Belleville West beats Granite City 48 0. And Edwardsville beats Collinsville 48 7. Muhammad Seymour beat Effingham 17 14 just north of us last night. And Newton beat Paris 10 7. Little Lineai Conference teams Robinson over Edwards County 46 14. Lawrenceville over Red Hill 49 0. Casey Westfield over Marshall 32 0. Oblong over Fairfield 28 6. Oakland Co-op beat Pal Hutt Co-op 26-16, and Alney beat Toledo Cumberland 13-12 in overtime. Central State 8, Mount Vernon Ram Week 1 opponent Rochester beat Jacksonville 35-14. Did you miss a score? Do you want to see them all for yourself? Go to facebook.com slash WMIXports. They are listed, divided up by conference affiliation. I know teams didn't all play conference games, but first come, first serve in each conference. For your reading pleasure, easy for you to see and organize as we have done most, if not all, the season. There you have it. Hard to believe tonight is the night in terms of high school football, in terms of the postseason. Of course, we find out who goes where. We don't find when, find out when they play. Uh, we get that either via media leak over the weekend or we get that on Monday at around 3 mm-hmm. o'clock, boo hiss. But possibility of a Friday night game does still exist in some places. Yeah, it does. We still have some available options, maybe a new option as well, so... We shall see how this rolls or how far we get to travel, but our usual places of assortment is uh, not happening. Any teams that we thought might get in that aren't? I mean, Cahokia, I don't think we expected them no. to be Hales, that we knew it would be pretty miraculous. I think after having seen Triad one week and then Altoff the next week, I think we pretty well knew how that one was going to go. Altoff just defensively I thought would be too much. Um Really no surprises in either of those. And I don't really think that we're necessarily surprised, at least I'm not, by Carbondale falling to Harrisburg. We knew that uh, Harrisburg was not going to lose the two South 7 teams in the same season after taking a licking at Marion. But that was just a different game. We knew the Bulldogs had improved immensely. We'll talk with Jeffrey Drake about this in, in just a moment, of course. But you just had that feeling that after beating Benton last week, they were not going to lose to Carbondale this week. No, they were not going to lose to Carbondale next week. And this week, or whatever the case may be, last night. And I'm just amazed at some of the qualifiers. I mean, three teams started the year 0 and 2 Ducoin, Carterville, Cesarville, or Waltonville, Woodlawn. In the past 15 years, there were eight teams that had been able to turn a trick, start 0 and 2, 0 and 3, and get in the playoffs. You have three teams in one year be able to get in almost a third of those teams. So the number now is 11 in the past 16 years that. Teams have started at least 0-2 or worse and have been able to get into the playoffs. Now you have on the other side of the coin, El Dorado was 2-0, didn't get in. Pinckneyville was 2-0, didn't get in. So you have some other schools that went by the wayside other directions that started out hot, hurt a lot, and the old Fairfield started 3-1, I believe. They didn't get in. So how the season turns is so very interesting. Well, and it is. It's amazing how one little thing or maybe one game, one injury can uh, turn the tide of your entire season. We saw that happen in a few places as well. And, you know, eh, and we'd be remiss probably if we didn't mention the Centralia Orphans. 9-0 and for the first time since 1969. They had a spectacular season. And, and uh, you know, a, a tough schedule for them along the way, of oh, course. Yeah. And, and they finished 9-0, and and that's not easy to do. But you also look at 5A, there were a, few, a couple of 9-0 and teams, especially. Look at Jerseyville coming from out of nowhere this year to, to finish 9-0. and And 
you know, their coach was, I believe, Coach Jacobs, if I'm not mistaken, the coach that got the program started in Rochester. So uh, some familiarity with success there, and it didn't take him long to turn around. So Ray Colling and Coach Jacobs, I believe it is, and in Jerseyville both did a fine job this year in turning two programs around to 9-0 and teams. I'm looking at things going on here, and I see El Dorado started 3-0, and Fairfield started 2-0. and I'm also seeing Pinckneyville started 2-0, and Carbondale started 3-0, and and none of those four teams made the playoffs. I mean, this, this think about that. When you start out the year like that, and, and a team like El Dorado, who we heard so much about at the start of the year, and you look at, you know, did not do anything after that, went one and four, or yeah, one and five. Fairfield started two and oh, didn't get in. Carbondale three and oh, Pinckneyville, you know, two and oh. Not good starts. It's a rarity year in all the stats I keep, but that's an odd deal there. Well, and I, you're right. And I think we just heard so much so early that this would be El Dorado's year. This is uh-huh. the year of the Eagles. This is this. This is that. Um, Chester kind of came. I don't want to say they came out of nowhere to be 9-0, and but I think we were looking at them to be atop the conference if we were to rewind the tape and go back to the Black Diamond Conference preview. But I don't think we're necessarily expecting 9-0. and I think we expected one of the teams in Williamson County to be 9-0 and this year oh, quite yeah. possibly. Well, we I think you look at it and you look at teams, you know, El Dorado and Fairfield were right up there with Carmi, were right up there with Chester to get in the playoffs, and they did not. Carbondale started 3-0, and came out of the gate. Remember they went to Waterloo, won that big right. road game, and – Week three, and we're like, oh man, took Carbondale, blah blah blah, and didn't do anything. I mean, they, you know, we thought Waterloo was improved. They go over there and beat an well, undefeated Waterloo team at the I, time. I think that's what kind of led us to think with Carbondale that it wasn't going to be the typical year of four and zero or three and zero, and then falling to four and five. I think we kind of bought into the system and thought that this year they'd be back in the postseason, making it, you know, five, seven, four South seven teams at least, but this year the conference only gets three, a couple of four and fives yeah. and, and Cahokia and Carbondale, but Centralia at 9-0, and oh, Marion at 7-2. I, I look, Marion? yeah, Marion, if they play today, win 7-2 at That's Albany, right. Missouri. I, I look at the Black Diamond. You've had in 16 years, 15 years, 39 teams started 2-0. and oh. Now you add to the fact that you had El Dorado and Fairfield, 41 teams started 2-0. and oh. And seven don't make it. I mean, it's a rarity that you start 2-0 and do not make the playoffs. Here's Cesar Valero. I'll tell, throw this stat out for the Red Devils. In the past 15 years in the Diamond, 41 teams started 0-2. 39 didn't make it. And you see what kind of odds the Red Devils bucked this year to get in the playoffs after starting 0-2 in the Black Diamond. Yeah. Think about that. It's thought about. Mount Vernon's turned a t- trick twice. The one that gets me is Harrisburg. Yeah, the Hugo Harrisburg era. in 08 and 06, both started 0 and 3, made the playoffs. I mean, you start going 0 and 3, you really got to turn some tricks. <laughs> yeah, you do. Of course, we uh, need to turn a break. We'll do that real quick on the Saturday Sports Show. We'll come back with Jeffrey Drake, voice of the Bulldogs, right now on WEBQ, our sister station. We'll do that after this break. We're presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. Back after these. The state of denial is a drag and a trial when i bought my cheap insurance should have known this day would come now i've had an accident and i'm feeling quite alone I called them at least 20 times but they won't pick up the phone without personal service my policy is kind of worthless get to a better state state farm don't deny yourself to call an agent tony wolf in mount vernon 242-1421 Hello, my name's Richard. When my wife had a heart attack, every second felt like an eternity. I wasn't thinking about what hospital had outstanding results or first-class facilities. All I cared about was getting her help fast. Thankfully, I didn't have to think about those things. The ambulance took us to Good Samaritan Regional Health Center. From the second we were admitted, I knew she was in great hands. My wife was immediately treated by an experienced cardiologist. I have no doubt the folks at Good Samaritan saved my wife's life that day. It wasn't until later that I realized Good Samaritan ranks 20% faster than the national average in response time. And they work directly with the prestigious Open Heart Program at Washington University. In 2013, Good Samaritan will be opening an all-new regional health center, making their heart care even greater. We're thankful that such quality care exists right here in Southern Illinois. Good Samaritan Regional Health Center. Raising a hospital, raising the bar. 
This Sunday, the Rams' hard-hitting defense looked to shut down Aaron Rodgers and the high-flying Packers. Hangs in, and he hangs in too long. He's sacked back inside the 45. Chris Long is playing a fantastic football game. Find out who gets to wear the belt. Catch all the action right here. Pre-game at 11, game time at noon on the Rams Radio Network. This is Steve Savard. Your home for Rams football is AM 940 WMIX. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, MyWithersRadio.com. Glad to have you with us, courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Yes, it is. Very privileged to welcome to the program Jeffrey Drake, voice of the Harrisburg Bulldogs on sister station WEBQ. Mr. Drake, good morning. Hello, guys. How are you all? You know, we're doing pretty good, and it's always great to hear your voice. It's been a while since I've heard it, but welcome to the program, of course. Harrisburg Bulldogs finished the season 8-1. and one. And uh, got a big win over the Benton Rangers a week ago and then parlayed that to some success as we expected over Carbondale. So the Bulldogs sitting pretty right now at 8-1. Yeah, they do. I think it's kind of a question of whether they're going to be on that 3A, 4A bubble, Chris. I think probably they're going to be one of the, the smaller schools in 4A, but you know, at 8-1 they're going to take that and they'll be probably more than likely at home at Taylor Field next week. And they won six in a row. They had that week three big loss at Marion, of course, uh, a lot of teams have lost to the Wildcats this year, but uh, impressed with how they came out last night with Carbondale. They led it 33 nothing at one point, and the Terriers got a few second half touchdowns late. But Harrisburg, uh, Dylan Hathaway, another big night, had 175 plus yards rushing. The senior fullback, he's got 15 touchdowns now, had two more last night. So I think defensively, Harrisburg's playing really well right now. They're averaging, giving up about 16 a game. So. You know, they might see a team like a Waterloo or somebody like that in here next weekend if they're a 4 eight school. But uh, you just have to wait and see, and it's going to be fun to to see what the projections are like uh, later this afternoon and tonight. A senior-laden group at Harrisburg that has carried a lot of the athletic programs at Harrisburg over the past four years. Is 8-1 and one in the regular season kind of like a deal where it's like, okay, that's done and over with. Now it's time to show what we can do as a senior group. That's a good point, Danny. It is, I think they have 16 seniors on their football roster, and they were honored last night before senior night. But the Harrisburg team that hasn't won a playoff game since 2005, and Jason Roper's not won a playoff game in Harrisburg, even though this is the sixth time in his seven years he's had a team in the playoff. Now, a lot of that has been because of the regular season schedule. They're having to sneak in the playoffs at 5-4, and 6-3, and three, just like last year. They opened up at Mount Carmel, the place that you guys were at last night, but they need to win a playoff game, at least one, and I, I know people are ready from the anxious for basketball season because they have really high expectations this winter, but I think the football team is, is playing really well right now, and it would be nice to put together a couple wins, but I think a lot of that's going to depend on a draw. If they somehow get a team like a, a Breeze Modern Day, or somehow I don't think it's going to happen, but have to play Mount Carmel again, a team they beat in week one at home, that wouldn't be the most favorable matchup. I know Harrisburg would like to try to play somebody different, but it's a senior class that's been very good, but uh, they need to take that next step and have a little postseason success in football. Speaking of that group, and you mentioned the schedule, always so very difficult for Harrisburg. You know, you open up with Mount Carmel, Duke Coin Week 2, Marion Week 3, the Ohio Division, and, of course, Carbondale. Over the next few years, is there going to be some changes to that schedule, do you think, or do you think Harrisburg's going to try to keep the teams on there that they have on their schedule currently now? Well, they're never going to be in a position where they're going to be hurting for playoff points as it stands now. I think that's going to probably come back to the cost here and with them having to play Massac twice this year. And Tigers had a big win last night over AJ, but the playoff points, I'm not sure they're going to be in because I don't know, you guys probably have talked about it, but they're talking like 39 or 40 playoff points. But I've heard them talk about maybe trying to get Marion off the schedule. I know Jason Rolfer was an assistant for Terry Martin. They're really good friends, but. You know, Harrisburg doesn't have any business playing them, especially when they're playing Mount Carmel and Decoy in weeks one and two. I've heard that they would like to get another week nine opponent with Carbondale. They've beaten Carbondale five out of the last six years, but, you know, they're, they're playing up, and there's some other Mississippi teams that cross over with other Ohio schools. I don't think that's going to be a crossover thing that's going to happen anytime soon, but certainly something Harrisburg would like to entertain. That something a lot of the other Ohio schools do get to play a lot of the Mississippi schools, and the only Mississippi team on Harrisburg's football schedule is the coin in week two, but it wouldn't stun me to see a new week three opponent with Marion uh, maybe leaving the Harrisburg schedule uh, in the near future. 
it's kind of old hat at Harrisburg this time of year with football. You get into playoffs, you do things. Do do people still have that fire and fervor as far as the fan base goes, thinking, okay, next week's Week 10 playoffs, we're back in it again? Yeah, I think so, and I think it's going to be fun because, you know, now you're 8-1 and one and you're going to be probably one of the higher seeds, whether it is 3A or 4A with all your playoff points, and you're going to be at home. So next Saturday afternoon, they're going to be at Taylor Field. And they've, had, they've had good crowds. The Week 8 atmosphere with Fenton was big, and that's why I was – impressed with the way Harrisburg didn't come out flat last night and didn't have any kind of a letdown because that Benton win was a, a big win for the conference and it gave the Rangers their only loss in the regular season. But, you know, like I told you guys earlier, they haven't won a playoff game in almost seven years, and that's something that uh, it's the 27th time I think the school's been in the playoffs. So Harrisburg, they're, they're used to getting in the postseason, but it's usually been one and done these last couple of years. So I think the, the Harrisburg fans here in Saline County will be anxious to get out to Taylor Field next weekend and They'll maybe get a win or two in the playoffs. Speaking of Benton, you bring them up. Benton and Harrisburg from the Ohio Division, both in the playoffs. The Rangers go 8-1, and one, some knocks against them. You know, Obviously, they played very well, but only beating one team with a winning record, and that's Carterville, who also got in the playoffs at 6-3. and three. What are your thoughts on the Rangers and how far maybe they could go in the playoffs, depending on 3A, 4A? I think if they certainly fall out of the 3A and get a favorable matchup, and, I mean, they won a playoff game last year. Cam Nian is one of the people that was surprised they had the success they had this year with the people they lost with graduating a guy like Childers and Leffler and Garrett. I mean, they lost a lot to graduation, but I mean, they were 7 0 coming into Harrisburg last week and turned it over a few times. But I think credit to Harrisburg defense in that matchup. But, you know, they're, that's another team I'm talking about in the Ohio Division that's fortunate enough to play crossover teams in the Mississippi. They're playing Carterville, they're playing Pinion, they're playing Sparta for that matter. So, I mean, it, it's a little bit of a difference when you're playing some teams compared to others on your schedule. But, uh, you know, you've got to play your opponents. And Benton's won some close games this year. And they beat Heron by a touchdown. They were fortunate to beat Murphy's Bowl. But, you know, it's hard to argue with eight and one regardless of who you play. Of course, Jeffrey, with your roles, your roles in the company, many of them as they may be, you, uh, handling sports down there at WEBQ and then news director WQRL, WISH, and then WMCL. I know you're also well-versed in, in sports in Saline County in general. El Dorado Eagles, a team that started off 3-0, and end up not making the playoffs. What happened there? Yeah, I think they were bit kind of by an injury bug. Yeah, they started off 3-0, and they had that close loss at Fairfield in the middle of the season. and were tied with Setzer at halftime last night at home, but to, fell by a touchdown or whatever it was. They had Vianna at home the week before. I think just credit Mike Rudin and Al Lane, what they've done at Vianna to, to really get that program off and running. But, you know, it's, it is kind of a letdown probably for Brandon Hampton and company because they've been in the playoffs the last couple of years before this and probably going to leave a little bit of a sour taste in their mouth. And I, one thing, El Dorado, they would have been safely in 2A because they did away with their co-op with Galatia this year. But, you know, 4 and 5, they're not going to get in. But I would think that they certainly turned that football program back around at El Dorado and they're going to be fine then in the years to come, but I'm sure it's going to be a long winter and spring to, to get back out there next year. <laughs> you answered that very well, because yes. he was up to stirring up no good with that question. You know that, don't you? <laughs> That's all, and, you know, I, with Harrisburg not playing on radio in football anymore in that Black Diamond close conference, I don't get to really see the Eagles. I mean, I talk to the people at the station that, that see them a lot, but, I mean, they've they got that big win against Parma early in the season, and, you know, the Black Diamond was hard to figure out. It was kind of Chester and everybody else beating up everybody. And I think that Vianna Johnson City game will be very interesting today. So that'll be another Black Diamond game that people will keep an eye on. But, you know, El Dorado, they're certainly a, a formidable opponent most weeks, but they just kind of got bit by the injury like some other teams and weren't able to win. They needed a win last night. And credit Fester, you know, they're, they're on a little bit of a roll, too. All right, our, our last question is our WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week, and this week's question is, when you're a channel surfing on the TV, what movie or movies do you always stop on to watch, no matter how many times you've seen them? Oh, man, that's a good question, because maybe a bad question for me. I don't watch movies, Danny. Come on, man. I'm more of a, I'll watch Fox Sports, Rocky Mountain, or Root Sports, or whatever right. it is now, to see those Rocky Maybe my boy Jason Giambi will be their manager, but you know, I'm not a big movie guy. If you're, you're talking classics, I always was a big fan of, like, Airplane, you know, that 1980s thing with Leslie yep. Nelson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, that kind of dry humor, but that's something I would probably stop to see if it was me. That's a solid choice. I mean, we'll go with the slapstick comedy known as Airplane. I mean, you can't go wrong with that one. Jeffrey, you're a consummate professional. We appreciate you for taking the time out to talk to us today, and uh, good luck to the Bulldogs, and I will see you on Tuesday. All right, sounds good, Chris. Thanks, Danny. See you guys yep. later.
That is Jeffrey Drake, voice of the Bulldogs on WEBQ, son of legendary Wyatt Drake, of course. And Jeffrey does a fine job for us down there in Harrisburg and also a great job on his newscast at Sister Station Q106 and then, of course, Wish FM and Classic Country, the legendary WMCL as well. We need to take a quick break. We will come back. We are at the top. They are, of course. We'll come back. We'll come back with uh, WMIX sports correspondent John Shadowins. There we are. Came to fruition this forefront of my mind finally. So after this rambling, we will head to a break. We're presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. And we will be back after these. Hospitals, trusted physicians, and dedicated staff, it's clear that our local health care industry is helping to make our community stronger every day. Hi, I'm Terry Prosize, a commercial lender and health care banking specialist at Community First Bank. I'm putting over 20 years of health care and business experience to work for our medical community and local businesses. Whether you have an expanding physician practice, an existing business, or hoping to start a new business, I have the financial prescription for you. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ida. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. This is WMIX, Mount Vernon, Marion. Another Withers Broadcasting Station. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois welcomes Dr. Beth Conrarty to their medical staff. Dr. Conrarty specializes in comprehensive pain management using a multidisciplinary team approach by working with other specialists for optimal diagnosis and treatment of pain. Dr. Conrarty will treat most conditions of the spine, including management of cancer pain. Dr. Beth Conrarty, helping to make life better day after day at the Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois in Mount Vernon. Call 618-242-3778. Celebrate 10 years of Renly College's Murphy Wall Campus in Pinckneyville. Built through generosity and determination of the residents, the campus has served more than 4,500 students. Renly College invites you to see how the facility still services the community on Tuesday, October 23rd from noon to 6. Take a tour of the campus, a chance for door prizes, and a stadium cup while they last. See you Tuesday from noon till 6 at the Renly College Murphy Wall Pinckneyville Campus 10th Anniversary Open House. We welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, MyWithersRadio.com, for past the top of the 9 o'clock hour here as we start the new hour of the Saturday Sports Show. Presented by Crossroads Community Hospitals, more than a hospital. Hey, it's what health care should be. Don't forget, you can find our scores on Facebook.com slash WMIX Sports, or hear them right here, 15 and 45, past each hour. We welcome to the program our WMIX Sports correspondent. He is John Shadowins. Coach, good morning. Good morning, fellas. You know what? It seems like this year... Doesn't matter where you go, which game you pick. Somehow, some way, with the exception of a select few, they end up in a blowout. Well, that's true, but you know it's blessing in disguise as well, Chris. Because <laughs> you know, whenever, whenever you when you have a blowout in the first half, there might be a, another game up about six miles up the road that is a pretty good ball game. And that was the case last night. Well, blessing in disguise because we were contemplating on the air what your action would be last night, and we ended up correct. So DC knows you better than. Anybody probably should, but you got to take in that Carterville Frankfurt game last night. Carterville ends up winning that one, forty to eight. But in turn, they secure their playoff future, getting that six win. Tell us a little bit about that game and how it started out. It looked like Carterville jumped on Frankfurt early. Yeah, they did. I was very interested to see uh, Dennis dress new offense. You know, knowing Dennis for for more than twenty years and, and preparing against Dennis in that same offense, uh, his, his uh, double wing slot attack with the, with the triple option. He's went to a spread now, and he looks very much like you see a college teams play on Saturday. The Ashman kid, a quarterback, is a heck of an athlete and probably the best throwing quarterback Dennis has had since Dennis has been head coach there. I was very impressed with Carterville offensively. Defensively, it was hard to tell. Frankfurt was hurting last night. They they were missing a couple of kids, and, uh, you know, they were, they were a little down this year anyway. So uh, Carterville didn't have a whole lot of, of, of even competition last night. But it was, it was good to see both coaches, you know, they're both friends of mine, and good to see their kids compete again. I, I look at Carterville right now, a few weeks ago, kind of treading water, kind of having water come on the ship, and they figure out a way to plug the holes and defeat A.J. and West Frankfurt rather handily. Is this a team to watch that's kind of finding their stride at the right time as they head into Class 3A? Yeah, I think that's the catchphrase here in the last couple of years, Danny, is finding their stride at the right time, you know whether it be uh, professional football like the New York Giants last year or, or high school football, you know, playing your best football at this time of year is, is, is what it's all about, and Carterville certainly is doing that. 
I think a lot of that is because, you know, at the first of the year, Carterville was playing a lot of brand-new kids who hadn't seen much varsity competition. And now they've got a full season under their belts, and, and you're seeing what they can do. I'm looking at Carterville moving on. The Ducoin, Carterville, and the Red Devils of Cecil or Waltonville Woodlawn all started the year 0-2. And to my recollection of my research in the past 16 years, that marks the 9th, 10th, and 11th teams that have went 0-2 or 0-3 and, and gotten into playoffs. Three teams in one year, it's rare to do. How hard is it to start out 0-2 and 0-3 and, and then somehow manage to make your way into the high school football playoffs? Well, I'll tell you, it all depends on scheduling, Danny. Uh, teams know what they're up against back during the summer. I, you know, when, when, when Coach Hollis said in the Red Devils, look at their schedule, they knew that, that J.C. and Chester – They'd be prohibitive underdogs going into that game. And 0-2 certainly wouldn't preclude them from the playoffs. So I think that they, even though they, they you know, when you're practicing, you think you've got a chance to win and, and you think you're going to win, but you also know in the back of your mind the season's not over when you don't. I think it, when teams get upset the first game or two and, and your, your apple cart's upset and, and, and it's a game you should have won, those are the teams that struggle. I look in the other side of the coin now. El Dorado three and zero, Fairfield two and zero, Carbondale three and zero, Pinckneyville two and zero. No, and all four of them out of the playoffs. I mean, that is something. I know obviously all different things going on, but disheartening to teams there because I'm sure, especially Fairfield and El Dorado, probably felt like they were going to be playing next Saturday when this season began. I think a couple of those you're right, Danny, but a couple of those goes back to scheduling as well. I remember back in two thousand three, two thousand four, whenever I coached Cesar Valier. Yep. Uh, we we won our first three games handily both those years, but we also knew we hadn't beaten the people yet that we had to beat to get in. And we really won a playoff team in those years. I think we finished four and five both of those seasons. And that's the, when you when you look at your schedule, you you know the teams that you have to beat to get in. And if you don't play those teams in the first three weeks, for example, Carbondale, I'm not sure they knew what they had, even though they started off the year so so good. Uh, but El Dorado's a different story. They beat one of the teams they had to beat in Carmine week one, and they have to be a disappointed group of young men right now. Speaking of this year and everything, how many football teams have you seen in your nine weeks of driving around? Uh, just, just counted that this morning and, and, and made a post on the website at 19, and most of those I've seen multiple times. Anybody right now, if you had to lay some money, and obviously we don't endorse gambling to high school level, but anyway... Any team that stands out to you that you have seen that goes, okay, this team's going to be somebody that's going to play two or three weeks in his playoffs? Wow, that's, that's a great question. <laughs> I, I would like I would like to think that Harrisburg has a chance to do that, but uh, the way that, and I was hoping they would break into three A, I really was, and I don't think that's going to happen now. You know, you've always got to look at a Ducoin. Ducoin hit their stride about, about mid season when they beat AJ, and uh, Ducoin's always a threat because they know. Al Martin coaches a season to coach 14 games. He prepares his depth in such a fashion that he's ready to play 14 games every year. So you've got to look at them as well. And this Red Hawk Carterville team, I mean, where did they come from? They're, they're playing great football right now as well. I'm looking at this playoffs thing, and you see what's going on, and you mentioned Harrisburg being 4A. Any thoughts, or have you done any homework as far as who do you think will be in what class, especially Harrisburg, Benton, DuCoin, always on those borderlines of 2, 3, and 4A? In the interest of full disclosure, I am terrible at that. I've tried to figure out our opponent the last three years, and I've been terrible at that, trying to figure out what, who goes where. Who can figure the IHSA out? I, I really don't know. But uh, I, just, I just think that tonight's going to be so exciting when we, when we finally get to see where everybody's going. And we'll be right in some cases, and we'll be dead wrong in others. I look at it this way, too. I tried to be one of those few years back, spent my Saturday afternoon having a map out and labeling and figuring and whatever else. It's impossible to do. But early things tell me the tea leaves, as they say, and, of course, my tea leaves could be rotten as well, is I think Harrisburg and Benton are curiously setting on that 4A bubble, kind of looking back at 3A right now, going, boy, we went up a class. And then the, the wild card in the situation to me is Belleville Altoff because I think the Crusaders – are looking at 3A, if not 2A, and that's a team that could really destroy some teams if they get down that low with the schedule they played this year. Yeah, I agree. We, we have nothing to compare to. We don't, you know, Belleville Altoff didn't play anyone as small as, say, at Chester, so we really have nothing to compare it to. I understand that the, and you guys have seen the Crusaders, that they, they have a very fast, aggressive defense and a mediocre offense at that level, but a mediocre offense at the South 7 level, level would be a juggernaut in the BDC, so... That, that'll be a, that'll be a tough out for sure.
Certainly no doubts about that. Altoff is probably one of the more impressive teams that I thought I saw on the Rams schedule this year. But, you know, it's hard to believe the football season is winding down and they're already getting to the postseason. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of a layoff sometimes between football and basketball. If you're common fans like us, there's not much of one. We're always trying to watch until that final down, final play of the state championship game. But there is some free time to be had occasionally, which leads me into our WMIX Sports Question of the Week. Say your channel surfing, be whenever you have free time. There's that one movie we all come across that we have to stop and watch. What is that movie for you? Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm your Huckleberry. Tombstone. Oh, nice. See, I have that in my DVD collection. That is one of the best ones. It always, it always seems like the best ones to stop and watch on TV are the ones that are sitting in our DVD collection, though. But Tombstone is a great choice. I have I've really only seen that one one time though. I think. Oh my goodness! Oh, I know. The DVD. He's missing <laughs> out, isn't he, John? That's a classic Western movie. Yeah. Well, see, you had... know, I know a lot of people can quote that movie line for line. Well, here's the issue I have: is that that came out right about the same time the Kevin Costner Wyatt Earp movie came out, and I saw the the like 16 hour Wyatt Earp movie. <laughs> And so, therefore, yeah. it's like I don't need to watch Tombstone. So I just watched it one time in passing, and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I just I was at a competitive disadvantage there because I watched Wyatt Earp first. And sometimes that'll happen, I guess. So I, I know we find out the postseason pairings tonight. Are there any early indications of where you may hope to go next week? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to wait until we see the schedule, of course, <laughs> and, and try to choose the most competitive game. Where, whether that's uh, involving a black diamond school, maybe a Chester or a River to River school, you know, you, you love the playoff atmosphere at DeCoin. I'm just excited about having a choice like that and, and, and getting to see some football next week. Astonishing. We hope to be talking about it and breaking it down next week. Coach, always good to talk to you. Hey, you guys too. We'll see you. That's Coach John Shadow, is WMIX Sports Correspondent. I was hoping to maybe see where he was itching to possibly go. I know he wasn't necessarily wanting to comment on what matchups we may see because it's pointless to right, comment on the match we've, we've figured that out time and time again there's no point in speculating no, i think the only lock i ever had was knowing in 2007 that the malford and rams were going to get cahokia in class 5a because they weren't going to be big enough to go to bump up to 6 that's the only time i've ever been right on any projection in the postseason so i knew then just to give it up because i got every yeah. i got the rest of that 5a quad wrong that year so well, yeah, last year when they said the direct line whatever the mileage and time premium is a travel you can't be over that and pinkneyville had to go to wherever they had to go last right. year that blew everybody out of the water because it's like yeah. how did that happen right so, well because there ha- if there's this many blah 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 over 150 miles and they do this but if they right. if your brother's cousin's mother went to this high school and her maiden name was this and they have to do that you know, or if your fourth cousin twice removed lives here, but you live here, and all I goes mean, down, it's, it's they're going to have figure. eight teams, or they're going to have sixteen. You know, it, depending on travel, if they divide the team, uh, team uh, state up into two sixteen team brackets right. or four eight team brackets, it all depends. And I mean, you can run into that situation well, now. What I think the problem is was Cesar Valer winning last night. That bumped up some teams, probably three to four, four to five, five to six, so on sure. and so forth. So. There are some teams that had to have, and I know one in particular has figured out, like 15, 16, 17 games that today and tomorrow, to last night today that had to be won by teams bigger than them. And that's all it's asking an awful lot. And, I, you know, again, it's going to be a very interesting 3A, 4A bracket around here, especially I think the most interesting thing to me is to see where Belleville Altoff goes because they're going to be 6-3 and three and probably on the road somewhere against an undefeated team from down here that hasn't seen the likes of Belleville Altoff ever in their scheduling. Uh, there's no doubt about that, and probably after, these postse- after this postseason we won't see them for quite a while. Uh, we It's 15 past the top of the 9 o'clock hour. We need to check in with our scores from last night and see how some of these teams that were on the bubble got in or didn't make it. Bubble teams. Mount Vernon lost at Kamal Carmel. The Aces go to 6-3, and 42-7. to seven. Altoff goes to 6-3, and three, knocking Triad out of the playoffs, 38-14. Chicago Hales Franciscan knocked Koki out of the playoffs, 13-0. Harrisburg knocked Carbondale out of the playoffs, 40-19. And Centralia beat Mascuda, 47-20. Benton knocked Carlisle out of the playoffs, 33-23. Heron kept their hopes alive going to 5-4, and four, beating A.J., 37-28. Ballard Memorial out of Kentucky beat Massac, 42-14. Patriots 
Patriots finish 0 and 9. Ducoin over Murphy 19 to 8. Indians 7 and 2. Carterville into playoffs at 6 and 3, beating Frankfurt 40 to 8. Columbia beat Nashville 49 to 6. Columbia is a 4A school to watch out for as well. Pinckneyville over Dupo 19 and 12, and the Panthers finish 4 and 5. Sparta breaks a 38 game losing streak, beating Redbud 40 to 14. Carmi's into playoffs, beating ET 50 22. Chester to 9 and 0, beating Hamilton County, double nickel to 0. Fairfield beats CZR 52 14, and the Red Devils knocked El Dorado out of the playoffs 28 to 20. Another scores around Belleville East is out of the playoffs. O'Fallon beat them 33 to 7. East St. Louis beat Alton 53-14. Belleville West beat Granite City 48 nothing, and Edwardsville beat Collinsville 48-7. Edwardsville's 8 and 1. That's a possibility. Them and O'Fallon next Friday night. Uh, one other score of interest will go with Rochester over Jacksonville, 35-14. The Rockets, of course, were a week one opponent for the Mount Vernon Rams. If you want to see those scores and the rest of them we have posted from around the region that involve teams that are in the region for us as far as our radio station and more is concerned, you can go to facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. We have them listed out by conference and affiliation or whatever comes up. All divided up nice and neat for your easy reading pleasure. There you have it. We need to take a break here on the Saturday Sports Show. When we return, we will have Voice of the Ducoin Indians, Steve Merrick, on the program. It's all presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. Hello, this is Hunt Bonin with People's National Bank. People's National Bank is proud to be a family-owned bank that has served Southern Illinois for over 100 years. We take pride in offering products that are customer convenient and friendly. With free checking, online banking, CD specials, mortgage products, and many other convenient banking services, we have everything to meet your banking needs. Stop by any People's National Bank and see what banking with a family-owned bank is all about. People's National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. When you think of a celebration, you probably think of confetti, party hats, and a big cake. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Jeep dealer at King City Chrysler Center, Mount Vernon. When I think of a celebration, I think of the Jeep Celebration Event. It's 0% financing party on Jeep Wranglers, and you are invited. We have the limited production 2012 Jeep Wrangler Call of Duty model, which is the toughest vehicle in any world and has special Call of Duty interior and exterior accents. We also have a 2012 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport or the must-see 2013 Jeep Wrangler Sport. Come talk to one of our associates to see how you can get 0% financing for up to 36 months. It's a Jeep celebration event at King City Chrysler Center 1603 Broadway, Mount Vernon, or you can browse our new and pre-owned inventory online at kingcitychrysler.com and find us on Facebook. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, MyWithersRadio.com. Glad to have you with us, presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what healthcare should be. Welcome to the program now. He is the voice of the Ducoin Indians, Steve Merrick. Mr. Merrick, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Hugo. How are you? You know what? I'm fantastic, but I can't imagine I'm doing as well as you are. 7-2 and two of the Ducoin Indians this season. Missed the playoffs for the first time in my lifetime uh, last year, but get back in this year. Apparently there is no curse of the turf. Now we're back to uh, 500 record on it. We were uh, uh, one and three last year. Or no, we might be ahead. See, we uh, lost two. Yeah, we're I think we're five and five now on that on that facility. So we're we're uh, doing pretty good. Our ball club. Uh, I had my personal expectations of them to start the year were very high, and and they still are. They uh, you know lost a tough one to Harrisburg and a tough one to Highland to start the year, but. Uh, the senior leadership has regrouped, and they've uh, they've done well. Six in a row in the conference, or five in a row in the conference, and beat Murfreesboro last night. So, uh, you know, things are good. Mr. Merrick, the Indians joined Cesar Valera and Carterville in the last 15 years. These are my unofficial stats. In the last 16 years, 11 teams have started the year 0-2 and 0-3 and and been able to turn the trick, get in the playoffs in the South 7, the Diamond, and the River to River. Ducoin turns the trick with Carterville and SVWW this year. What was the key to the success after starting 0-2 for Ducoin to rattle off seven in a row? Uh, they cut out on mistakes and uh, um, turned and quit turning the ball over. Uh, we had some a uh, couple of interceptions early in the Highland game and Harrisburg, and 
not all totally the quarterback's fault, uh, you know, and and uh, they're having some untimely penalties in those two games, and and a missed extra point cost uh, at least a tie to go maybe in overtime against Harrisburg. So uh, they eliminated their mistakes. I think Coach Martin uh, uh, really kind of felt like he. Uh, was going to try to do a, a bunch of different things offensively to start the year, and they simplified things, and uh, they've been on a run ever since. We had Coach Martin on a few weeks ago to talk about the Indians, and having him on and having known him and having seen him coach over the year, a sense of no panic from Coach Al Martin in this situation after starting 0-2. How does his guidance over this football program kind of keep things in line, no matter how good or how bad things are going through coin football? Well, I think I think the first thing, you know, obviously his experience, uh, 25 years as a head coach, and uh, you know, I heard him make a comment, since he's been 14 years old, every fall he's, he's had to uh, either play or coach football. So his experience and over the test of time, I think, uh, allows him to step back and look at the whole picture and not worry about a, a blown block on a third and one that might have turned the game around or maybe a fumble or an interception. Um, I know from speaking to him after the first two weeks, he, he felt like uh, Hyman was a good football team, Harrisburg was a good football team, and DuCoin was a good football team. So I, I think that his belief... In a, in a lot of different things, I think one thing about him is is uh, his belief in in how to coach football, how to play football, how to teach school, how to live your life. Uh, he he takes that stuff very seriously, and he doesn't waver. And I think at the end of the day, that's why he's he's very doesn't panic. I look at this as Ducoin gets in seven and two right now. You're one of the best at figuring out where everything is, who's playing where, and what. Where do you have Ducoin now as far as Class 3A or Class 2A? Uh, I think it's 50-50. I think Ducoin is either going to be either the biggest or the next to biggest in um, 2A or the smallest uh, or the next to smallest in 3A. Um, I think if, uh, looking, and I don't spend as much time as I used to because I, I found other ways that, other people are spending more time than I used to spend, and I just take their information and put it <laughs> in my head and come up with something. So, anyway, I think, uh, uh, you know, some people, and I'm, I'm looking at this DuCoin, uh, if they got into a, a deep south quad of, uh, you know, maybe Chester, Belleville, Altoff, DuCoin, Lawrenceville, Carmi, Casey, um, Johnston City, I'm leaving somebody out, but... Uh, uh, at eight grouping down there, and if you if you line them up, that would be Lawrenceville. I think Lawrenceville is a team I forgot, but Lawrenceville maybe a Lawrenceville at Ducoin, maybe a Carmi at Ducoin. Um, I'm not sure. There's a couple games today uh, of smaller schools that are going to play a factor in what happens. That's for sure. If Ducoin went three A, um, you, again you got a uh, really a cluster of Carterville, Anna, Ducoin. Um, Benton, I think if Bitcoin does go 3A, Harrisburg might be 4A. Um, so, you know, it, it's a, always a fun time of year to be sure, but that's that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. You saw a couple, a lot of playoff teams this year with the Ducoin schedule, well, two of them in particular in the conference, Carterville and Anna Jonesboro, kind of two teams going different directions right now. Give your thoughts on both those teams, Carterville and Anna Jonesboro. Well, I'm really puzzled that uh, – at Anna, um, I thought they would uh, Carterville and Anna would be a great high school football game, and I know uh, Heron and Jason Carnes is getting better every week. Uh, they've got some kids back healthy that they didn't, you know. Ducoin beat them thirty-five to nothing, and um, one of their better running backs I know is Chase Merrill did not play in that game, and he he's been playing lately. So I think. Uh, Heron is a much better team now than they were, and uh, for for them to beat uh, Anna last night, I mean, I, Anna. One thing about them, Danny, they're always going to have good football players, but sometimes the number of good football players, if they get a guy dinged up or something, they they're not real deep. And I don't know if they're hurt. I really don't know what's going on with them. But I was very impressed. Ducoin was very, very, very lucky to get out of there with a win, 
in week four. So uh, Carterville, on the other hand, they you could see that they're coming. I mean, they got the, a lot of good juniors. Uh, I've been watching the quarterback uh, since he was a freshman, and I know what kind of speed he's got. And now the Frantello boy is running hard. And, you know, uh, when you're coaching high school football or watching high school football, Sometimes it takes several weeks for your lines to get uh, in rhythm, and when you do that, it's a dear different football team. I think that's what's happened to Carterville. In the football teams that are on a roll right now, I would be remiss if I did not say with Ducoin doing so well at 7-2, and two, uh, another favorite of yours, and it kills me to say this, Notre Dame also having a tremendous year. Your, your Irish are playing very well, aren't they? I had the very uh, lifetime fortunate event to go see them play last week against Stanford, and it was quite an experience for me personally. Um, it's quite a facility, quite an atmosphere up there. Um, they Defensively, they're finally where they, they need to be. I don't know about offensively. They're going to find out, you know, BYU they play today, and the next week they're at Oklahoma, and they still have, uh, you know, USC at the end of the schedule, so... Uh, it's with great guarded optimism that I, I hope they're back to where they should be every year. A mutual, uh, a mutual friend of ours has uh, obviously went to Notre Dame this year for the Michigan game, and, of course, he's up in Ann Arbor today for yeah. Sparty. So I have not heard from him today, although I heard from him late. I guess it would be late last night, uh, early this morning. Uh, he and I are kind of taking a step back this year with our Michigan Wolverines, but he is up there enjoying one game today at least. Yeah, he... Uh, uh, no matter where he's at with these dead gum uh, technology that we have today, uh, he's not far away because, uh, you know, he texts all the time, wanting to know what the score was last night, yeah. what was going on. So, yeah, he, uh, the old boy's a good Michigan fan. He just, he, he's uh, he's uh, one of these travelers, you know. He travels all around with him anymore, it seems like. <laughs> he's almost a roadie groupie kind of person, yeah, isn't he, at this exactly. point? Yeah, exactly. I wonder if he's going to bring Brady Hope back one weekend if they have a weekend off because he's he's with them around him quite a bit on the uh, road, home, and in bowl games. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> the Ducoin Indians will be in the playoffs again tonight. You'll find out later tonight like everybody else will. But before we get to that, we Chris and I like to do what we call our WMI Exports social media question of the week for our Facebook page. We asked this week, and it was football going on, when you're channel surfing on the TV – what movie or movies do you always stop to watch no matter how many times you have seen them? Um, Caddyshack, Stripes, Urban Cowboy, and one that's on one of those upper channels uh, that when they play it, they it, 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 you'll, it, you may go ten years and not see it, and then it's on four times in a week. It's Steve McQueen and Allie McGraw in The Getaway. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, see, now I, I'm with you on Stripes. I watched Stripes again the other day. I think it was on, like, WGN because they seem to show it all the time. Right. In the heyday of Bill Murray with Caddyshack and Stripes, it's hard to beat improv by Bill Murray in a movie with his comedy. Uh, not familiar with that, but he's a good actor. Yes. No doubt about that. And, of course, Steve, we wish the best of luck to the Ducoin Indians and certainly hope they're able to call them all the way, you know, maybe to a state championship game again. Well, I... I, uh, I'll tell you what, Chris, and, and I, I've said this publicly, and I believe it's privately for many, many years. Um, every time, I don't care who you are or what town you're from, you need to savor every moment of playoff football because you just don't know when or if it's going to end. And uh, we in DuCoin became awfully spoiled, and it feels very good to have that back again, but you got to enjoy every minute of it. Because uh, it's a special thing, and you you know you don't know when the next time's going to be. No doubt about that. Best of luck to the Indians. Thank you. That's Steve Merrick, voice of the Ducoin Indians, and he very accurate. You have to enjoy every moment of a playoff run, and and you know what they, they what twenty six years in a row the Indians made the postseason before last year. I think it was twenty seven. It felt like it was my entire life. Uh, I know and that. Again, and one game they were they lost to Murphy. Went five and four, didn't have enough points to get in. And, and that's the insanity. Yep. yep. The insanity of it all. Speaking of insanity, Bruce Dickey, voice of the Fairfield Mules, getting ready to join us in a moment. Probably the best dressed man in all of radio. We, we'll talk to him after the break. We'll take a quick one here, presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. There's nothing like it. Halloween at Dale's Harley-Davidson. ha, 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 ha. 
Hi, this is Matt Watercutty, and this Friday night at the Granada, it's our annual Dale's Harley-Davidson Halloween party to benefit Lifeboat Alliance, the newly opened homeless shelter in Mount Vernon. It's from 6 till 10.30. Free food. Oh yeah, and free drinks, of course. Costume contests and lots of great music by Jeff Widows. An awesome silent auction. Advanced tickets are only $10 and $15 at the door. Dale's Harley-Davidson is celebrating Halloween for Lifeboat Alliance at the Granada this Friday. Special thanks to our sponsors, Azusa Printing, Independent Waste, and People's National Bank. Come join the party with Dale's Harley-Davidson at the Granada Friday night from 6 to 10.30. Free food and free drinks, costume contests, and lots of great music by Jeff Widows. An awesome silent auction. Advanced tickets are only $10 and $15 at the door. Check us out on Facebook and online at dales-hd.com. Welcome. We have been expecting you. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency... Call 911. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, MyWithersRadio.com. It's presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. We welcome now. He is the voice of the Fairfield Mules, Bruce Dickey. Brother Dickey, how are you? Hey, how you doing, Chris? What's new, Danny? No, it's a good day, <laughs> Saturday. How are you? I am great. Thank you very much for asking. Of course, it's good. Me. Cardinals going to win tomorrow night. We just wanted to go back out to San Francisco and have some fun. Okay, nothing wrong with that. And of course, for those who have never met this man, we are talking to right now, Bruce Dickey, huh. probably the best dressed man I have ever seen anywhere in my life. And I think he thinks I'm just being a smart a sometimes, but I mean that with with every bit of my heart. And just a great dude that we are talking to right now. But the Fairfield Mules, a team that I can't remember the last time they lost a Week One game for one. But a team years. that we are so used to seeing. Yeah, I think it was yeah. year 2000 yep. or 1999. So used to seeing them make the postseason, though, as of late, out of the Black Diamond Conference. What happened this year, 4-5? and five? Oh, ran into, uh, ran into a couple of uh, last-minute losses. Uh, probably uh, there were three or four games on the schedule that uh, that uh, Fairfield, was, well, we were in the lead late in, uh, in three or four of them and, and just couldn't, couldn't finish them off. That was the trouble thing against Susser, uh, down at Susser. They uh, had pulled. A, they had an 85-yard drive and, and uh, scored with 20 seconds to go, and, and that beat us. And then against uh, Johnston City, we had the lead, and uh, their big Dylan Johnson, big running back, uh, broke like 10 tackles on a 30-yard run with 20 seconds to go and no timeout. So it was just some hard luck and uh, a little bit of probably tiredness late. But they, they, uh, you know, that's the thing. They, they beat five teams that are in the playoffs and lost 14. Or no, sorry, they beat four teams that are. Uh, out of the playoffs and lost to the five teams that are in. So I guess uh, the the black diamond worked out for like for, except they're not playing next week. Working, <laughs> that kind yeah. of thing. Working out in that black diamond, you have seen obviously all those teams being a close conference. Chester, Johnson City, Viana, Viana Carmi, and SVWW. Feel free to talk about any of those. We guess we can start with Chester at the top. Your thoughts on the Yellow Jackets? Well, Chester is. Terribly fast. They are they're the fastest team that uh, that I've seen in a long time, and they are also a, a very well disciplined. I, those kids, heck, they they're, they're, uh, they do uh, they do they do their their pregame calisthenics and stuff in uh, in in order, and, and they they all have the same leg up on the on the, the defensive line when they're sitting there waiting for the for the. For the play to start, it's, it's just really an impressive team to watch. They're terribly well disciplined. They do everything right. They just they just don't make mistakes. And if you turn the ball over to them, they're going to score. It's uh, it's just one of those. They are they are very well disciplined. I hope they don't end up having to play Belleville all uh in the uh, first round next week because that that'd be a real shame for that for that nine and zero team to have to face a six uh, basically a team that plays a six a schedule. It'd be a real step up for them. They're very good. The rest of the teams, you're going to end up with three six and three teams, and uh, one one seven and two teams, depending on who wins JC and Viana today. I think it'll probably be Viana at home. Uh, like uh, like we said, we were, we were talking last night. Uh, you know, 
we use Brian Turner and I and, and uh, Marty David. When you go to Vianna, they're in a, they have a 14-point lead before you take the field uh, down there on that field, <laughs> Coach Mike Rude. And I figure that they're going to go 7-2, and two, but I think the rest of the league is going to struggle no matter who they get because uh, they're, they all, all the teams are going into the postseason with some real problems. Starlight's beat up. They're banged up yep. at 6-3 and three even. Um, Cesar Valier is a, a good, solid team. I think they're probably a year away. Uh, Johnston City Coach Mings has got them six wins, maybe seven today. Uh, but uh, they've got they've got the occasional issues too with uh, with with defensively. And then I mean they we were we had a we had a good lead on them. Uh, so it's going to be. I think it, I think next Saturday might be a rough day for the Black Diamond. But you know, depending on who they get, they, a couple of these teams are going to be at home. Uh, Chester hopefully will get a win against Belleville Altoff, and, and hopefully may not be able, may not play him. That'd be great if they didn't play Bell right. Altoff. But but, uh, but Viana, I think Viana probably gets a home home game next Saturday, and uh, they'll have a good shot at winning that. They'll probably be playing a conference team if they do. They probably would play Chester since they're both in three A. Uh, you know, I look at it this way: you've been up and down the highways and byways like Chris and I have in sports and football in general, and. Is it a case this year of there's a lot of really good teams battling, beating up on each other, or is it a case of high school football in Southern Illinois trending downward in the last two, three, four years as far as teams making deep runs? Oh, I think it's probably more the second, and I think it's just a cycle. I, I think it's really just cyclical. It'll uh, it'll come back. It, it's it'll it always does. It's like a like a uh, like high school basketball. I mean, you can look at it the same way that that it's. High school basketball may not come back because kids don't shoot around anymore so much as they used to. Now we're getting on our old man folk bosses. But, but uh, in football, I think it's cyclical. There's just not as many good athletes as there as there have been, and, and it'll, it'll come back. Kids will uh, it, it, you get better athletes over the course of the years. A school the size of Fairfield, like four hundred and what are we at? Four hundred thirty kids, four hundred twenty uh-huh. kids. You will have we'll have good athletes about every. Five or six, seven years, and and uh, the, the 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 point, the key is to try to keep them coming, or keep getting uh, the through the youth, youth programs to have good, smart athletes coming up. But uh, sometimes kids just aren't that athletic. It's, it's part of the business of a small school. Uh, a little side topic, off question. Obviously, today Sparty gets to go get beat at Michigan today. Is uh, Big Brother getting ready for the game, or is he just kind of taking it in stride today? Big Brother is. Still drinking the green Kool Aid, and oh, uh, he yeah. says they're going to win today at uh, at Big Blue. And and I've, he's been telling me this since uh, the schedule came out. But because I, I was all well, you know, really, I, I said Michigan's going to they're going to probably represent that side, the Legends or whatever it is. They're the Legends, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, something uh, like that. Whatever they created up there, yeah. Yeah, I said I said Michigan's going to be the Legends representative. You're not going back to Indianapolis, and he just looks at me like I'm like I'm speaking Greek or something when I say stuff uh-huh. like that. He, he is, uh, he's fired up. He, he was a little, I think, I think that Iowa loss might have bothered him a little bit. He was <laughs> at the Indiana game. He was at the Indiana game, and you know, uh, you know, Big Doug, he got the, it was the first quarter before he was uh, uh, getting in verbal fights with the Indiana Hoosier fans. So, I mean, it, 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 it took him about 10 minutes. I'm, I'm sorry to stay proud. that long, you know. Yeah, well, that's that's what we're all proud of him. It's uh, a waiting ten minutes before he started getting people's face. That's very awful. <laughs> Oh, Brother Dickie, one of the things we like to do here is ask an off-the-wall, off-topics question, maybe sports-related, maybe not. Was. No, no, no. No, no, no not, <laughs> not at all. Okay. Of course, now after seeing some of your posting this week on a place we like to frequent, I'm kind of worried after I ask this, but we all, t- we all tend to uh, surf channels quite a bit watching TV. We all have that one movie or maybe multiple movies where if it's on, we have to stop and watch it regardless of how many times we've seen it. What is that movie for you? Oh gosh, uh, Days and Confused. Nice. Days and Confused. I'll stop anytime uh, when Days and Confused is on. And I mean, you can, that's that's the type of movie you can basically pick up at any time, yeah. and uh, it's always uh, it's always entertaining. Then you can turn it off for if you want, but you can sit there and watch a uh, watch a uh, any of it at, at, for for a good long period of time and have a have a nice time. Watch Wooderson. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fun movie. Especially we can watch. Fun. Especially we can watch Mitch Kramer get beat up by the, uh, the by the Giants. The car, 
I was at the yeah, I was at the game Thursday night when the Cardinals beat Mitch. So nice. I was real I was glad <laughs> to do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Brother Dickey, thank you for taking the time to join us here this morning. We always appreciate hey, it. Hey, I have a question for you. We're yeah. uh, with uh, Mount Vernon, uh, Shane and Boys, 9 and, or 0 and 9, not 9 and 9, sorry about that, 0 and 9. Where are, you gonna, are you guys going to be broadcasting next week? Uh, you know what? I, I don't think we are. I think we're going to see what kind of trouble we can get into at other locations. Oh, you, so you're going to go around and watch football. Oh, yeah. Instead of working. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. That, that sounds like a lot of fun. You know, where do you... Which, which game are you going to look for? The uh, first round, what's the big matchup? Uh, what, what's I always, go, I always try to find something on Friday night somewhere. I don't, yeah. And, you know, have, have a, have, meet some people for dinner usually and, and see what happens after that and then see what happens, what, what kind of mind frame I'm in when I get to the game. Well, then you can go up on, that's, a, that's, that's good thinking because that saves Saturday. You can go up to Champaign and watch uh, the Illini just beat the heck out of those darned Indiana Hoosiers next week. I see. Right along those lines, exactly. <laughs> you're, you're thinking I'm delusional, aren't you? Yeah, pretty well. Me and Illinois in that game, yes. But yeah, you know. I'm not heading to Illinois tomorrow next week. It's going to be more like where around here can we go. Friday night's the concern because some of our usual hotbed Friday night playoff spots aren't around there because teams can't make the playoffs or aren't you know aren't in or will be on the road. So we're kind of worried about next Friday night what our plans are. Well, maybe you'll just have to sit around and watch uh, CSI Miami or whatever. Yeah. The heck. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. Friday night. Or, uh, well, you see, I don't think there's a World Series game Friday night either. It's Wednesday and Thursday. So, yeah, you're, you're going to have nothing to do. You bet. Well, well man, we, good one, we need to catch up uh, soon. That's right. We'll see you uh, probably, certainly, if not before, at the uh, you going to Connie Allen. Oh, yeah. Yes. Can't miss that. All right. Yeah, I don't blame you. We'll see you, boys. See you. Right. That's Bruce Dickey, my man. He is the voice of the Fairfield Mules, of course. And... <laughs> <laughs> This is this this isn't a show. This is a conversation at all times yes. with my man Bruce Dickey. But we are slightly behind. Not a big deal. We'll get you some scores a little bit later on the program. We'll delay that. We need to talk Rams soccer with Jeff Harrison. Rams at Carbondale today. Two o'clock is the kickoff of that regional championship game between the Mountford and Rams and the Marion Wildcats. We'll talk to Jeff Harrison after the break. This is a Saturday Sports Show. WMIX. MyWithersRadio dot com is presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. Back after these. Every so often, the stars are in perfect alignment. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Lincoln dealer at Ford Square, Mount Vernon. The stars have aligned with the Lincoln Autumn Sales Event going on now. Save thousands off MSRP on your favorite Lincoln luxury car, SUV, or crossover, including up to $5,400 off a 2012 Lincoln MKZ with available voice-activated sync, my key technology, and even rain-sensing wipers. How about up to $6,500 off a 2012 Lincoln MKX with best-in-class fuel economy and intelligent all-wheel drive? You can also save up to $4,750 off a 2012 MKT and up to $3,000 off a new 2013 MKS. Come see one of our sales consultants to save big money and drive away in Lincoln Luxury or any Ford model. New or pre-owned at Ford Square Mount Vernon, 1501 Broadway in Mount Vernon, Illinois. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, MyWithersRadio.com. It's presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. We welcome our next guest. He, guest. he is Rams head soccer coach, Jeff Harrison. Coach Harrison, good morning. Hey, how's it going, guys? You know, going pretty well. You guys got a big win the other night. Some would call it an upset on paper over Carbondale, one nothing. You play Marion today at 2 o'clock for a 2A regional championship at Carbondale. Things going pretty well right now for the Mount Vernon Rams. Yeah, you know, uh, we feel pretty good about ourselves coming into today. Uh, into today. Uh, we know we're going to have our hands full with a, uh, a really tough Marion team. Um, but, you know, Tuesday was a, uh, a big win for the team, big win for the program. Um, you know, we haven't uh, – this is just the third regional championship game that we've been able to be a part of. Um, and have, having to go through Carbondale to get there, 
Uh, it's been a really tough task for us to uh, try and overcome throughout the years. Uh, so any time that we can uh, get a win over those guys and have that win uh, propel us into this situation uh, is a good thing. Looking back, you've had a couple of days. I know you're preparing for Marion, obviously, but looking back at that win, you mentioned a big one for the program, the team. What does that actually mean for the program as you move away from this season into the next few years in a soccer program at Mount Vernon? Um, you know, I believe it just shows progress. Um, it shows that, uh, you know, we're moving forward um, with, with trying to uh, be competitive with these more elite type teams. Um, you know, this isn't the best year that Carbondale's had, um, but they're a strong program year in, year out. Uh, that's part of the reasoning for why, uh, you know, it's so difficult for us to get into uh, these regional championship games is because our, our regional is tough. We've got to go through Marion. Uh, we've got to go through Carbondale, one before the other. If we're going to come out of that regional and, and make it into sectional play, um, we're going to have to go through those two teams. And, and they're some of the toughest teams in the neighborhood for sure. Um, they've been doing it for years. So, you know, we, we've had some wins over Marion, um, the fewer over Carbondale. Um, we've started showing uh, those teams and the outsiders that, uh, you know, we can, we can compete at that level. Um, so it's just a big confidence builder for the kids. It makes them hungry uh, to want to continue to grow, become better players, and uh, and shows that we have an opportunity to uh, potentially be uh, in big games in the future. Big game in a future day at 2 p.m. against Carbon or against Marion at Carbondale. When if you win that, you advance out to play the winner of Chatham and Glenwood in Jersey. Not looking ahead, but we'll get back to Marion. Seven goals the other day against Centralia, a very high-powered offense Marion team. What are you going to have to do today? Try to keep them in check and get your regional championship. Well, we're going to have to have several things fall into place for us. Um, they've got a couple. Well, they've got several really talented kids. Their their starting eleven is is very experienced. A real sure-footed bunch of guys. They just don't make mistakes. You have to create mistakes uh, on their end, and, and it's just a really difficult thing to do. Uh, we, we've got to find a way to get ourselves on the scoreboard early and uh, as often as possible. Um, and at the same time, we have got to find a way to slow down their attack. They are a very high-powered offense. They're very strong defensively. They've got a great possession game. Uh, we've got to find a way to possess the ball a little bit uh, ourselves. Uh, if we allow them to possess 75% of the time, that's not going to uh, play out very well for, for our side. Um, they've got a couple kids in midfield that are uh, tough to slow down, great scorers, great defenders, uh, great setup men, um, do a little bit of everything. They're very versatile. They can swap players around all over the field. Um, so it's going to be tough. Uh, we've got to just do our best to uh, try and mark those guys, stay with them, uh, slow their attack down, find a way to score, and uh, hopefully we can we can create that situation. And, and late in the game, we can find ourselves in, still within striking distance, or or possibly hopefully have a lead. No doubt about that, Jeff. And of course, you were among our first guests to experience the WMIX Sports Question of the Week back when it was, I think it was Easter candy back then, but we've evolved now. Everybody is guilty of channel surfing. Everybody just about is guilty of having that one movie, regardless of how many times they've seen it or if they own the DVD. If it's on TV, they have to stop and watch it. What is that movie for you? Uh, there's, there's a long line of them. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, an, I'm a 90s guy. I like 90s music. I like 90s movies. You know, That's just kind of where I am. Uh, but if I had to pick just one, it's definitely a favorite of mine and a favorite amongst uh, my family and my wife's family. And that's that's probably Dumb and Dumber. It nice. Just, uh, it just fits well into my life, and uh, that's something that I can't uh, I can't help but laugh at every time I see. So it's always uh, always good for putting me in a good mood. So are you one of those that's excited at the potential for the the actual sequel? I guess Jim Carrey might be back on for it. Uh, yeah, if Jim Carrey's on. That's a that's a whole new deal. So um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's always hard to. Uh, outdo something like the uh, the first version of that but you know I'd, I'd give them a second attempt and see what see what they can come up with amen coach good luck today against the marion wildcats we're rooting for you would love to see the rams pick up that regional championship today against the always tough marion wildcats good luck to the rams at two o'clock at carbondale today i right, appreciate it guys that's jeff harrison head coach of the mount vernon Rams soccer team one of my favorite interviews i'm gonna tell you why Give him a couple of questions, he's good to go, and very informative and insightful about the game, and, and we certainly know where he picked that up from. And 
Good luck to the Mount Vernon Rams today. Marion Wildcats, that would be a big, big win for this program. And when you really think about Mount Vernon Rams soccer and when Steve started it, it's still in its infancy in comparison to these teams, and the other teams in the South 7 that have been playing forever. I remember Centralia had a team before I even got to high school. Marion and Carbondale have been playing for a long time. So a big win earlier this week, hopefully parlayed into a bigger win today at 2 o'clock. Superblock in Carbondale, check it out, Mount Vernon Ramp Soccer for a regional championship. I know there's a lot going on today, Harvest Fest, amongst some other things. So good luck to the Mount Vernon Ramp Soccer team on the pitch today. We need to take a break here on the Saturday Sports Show. I know we're about six, seven minutes late. We'll get you those scores one final time from last night's football action. We'll also discuss our favorite movies to stop and watch. It's our WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week. Your favorite movie. It doesn't have to be your favorite. Just one that you have to stop and watch anytime it's on TV when your channel's surfing. Or maybe you seek it out ahead of time. I tend to do that at times. This is a Saturday Sports Show presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. Have you ever been traveling out of town and realized you needed cash? Using another bank's ATM can cost you a few extra dollars in fees to get the cash you need. Well, not anymore. People's National Bank introduces MoneyPass. MoneyPass allows you to use over 23,000 additional ATMs in the United States without any fees. Stop by People's National Bank. Visit peoplesnationalbank.com or moneypass.com to find out more information. People's National Bank, providing our customers the highest quality products and services since 1909. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival when minutes matter choose the er that doesn't waste time choose crossroads community hospital visit crossroadscommunityhospital.com slash faster to learn more if you are experiencing a medical emergency call 911 And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, MyWithersRadio.com. Glad to have you with us. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski in studio. Presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. I promise something. I'm not going to let what just happened distract me. We owe you some scores from last night. You can always find them on Facebook night to night. Facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. Or stay updated during the game at WMIX Sports. But let's check out those scores for one last time Mount from last Carmel night. Mount Carmel over Mount Vernon, 42-7. to Altoff over Triad, at 38-14. Hales Franciscan over Cahokia, 13 nothing. Harrisburg over Carbondale, 40-19. to Centralia over Muscuta, 47-20. Benton beat Carlisle, 33-23. Heron over AJ, 37-28. Ballard, Kentucky beat Massac, 42-14. Ducoin over Murphy, 19-8. Carterville over 40. West, or Carterville over West Frankfort, 40-8. Columbia over Nashville, 49 to 6. Pinckneyville over DuPont, 19 12. And Sparta beat Redbud, 40 to 14. Carmi over ET, 50 22. Chester over Hamilton County, 55 0. Fairfield over CZR, 52 14. And SVWW beat Eldorado, 28 20. Today, Fina Goreville's at Johnson City at 1 o'clock. Marion is at Normandy, Missouri at 1 30. For all the other scores from around the region that are in our broadcasting encompassing circle. You can go to Facebook.com slash WMIX Sports to see them listed not only by conference, but by all kinds of things. Just for your easy reading pleasure. So you don't have to search and look and figure out which teams are where. Easy reading, but not easy listening, of course, on Facebook. Can't hear on Facebook. You can hear us right now at WMIX, MyWithersRadio.com, however. Scores on the 15s and 45s. That'll continue. Well, I guess that's always well, going to continue. <laughs> Well, there won't be quite as no, no. You're right. Yeah. Well, we might have. Well, you never know. We might have one Friday night game. Yeah. To put it to fifteen to forty fives. Oh, anyhow, our WMIX Sports social media question of the week this week was channel surfing. We all do it. There's that movie we always stop on and have to watch when we come across it. DC, what's yours? Uh, I've got three. Um, oh. Oh. Yeah, you know it's hard to do. you know Top Gun is number one. Okay. Well, obviously two. And I would say Fast Times at Ridgemont High, number three. Really? Oh, yeah. You Fast threw time. me. Oh, yeah. Now, now, now. When we discussed this last Yeah, I night, changed my mind. Okay. 
But if those are all comedic performances, if you right. had to go serious movie, would it be Shawshank? If I had to pick a dark horse into this, it would be the Shawshank Redemption. There is something about that movie every time that it is on that I just am amazed at. Don't know why. I'm just amazed. Morgan Freeman, Tim Robbins, the there whole are, lot. There are a lot of people that think other movies are Tim Robbins' best. I think Shawshank That's, is Tim Robbins' best performance. Yeah. I, Bull now, Durham's got nothing on him there. Morgan Freeman, yeah, you can make an argument for quite a few films for him. I think that's his best performance. I yeah. just think there's something about them that blends together. It is chock full of character actors who do a great job in that movie as well. I mean, top to bottom, it is loaded with non-famous character actors that you have seen in a million other things. Yep. And Shawshank's just a great movie. However, it is not mine. I do own that movie, though. I don't know that I've ever unwrapped it to watch the DVD, however. All three of mine that I said I own. Mine would have to be Back to the Future. And my fiance, I drive her nuts with it. Because not only do I own the trilogy, the DVD trilogy, I quote it nonstop. And I actually, for a long time before I think she erased it, had it on DVR as well. So not only would I watch it on demand, on TV, whenever it was on, have it on DVR, and then have the DVD, I just I watch it all the time. There was a period there where every Saturday I'd watch the Back to the Future trilogy if I had nothing else going on. I mean, yep. there's just something about that movie. I love it. Shawshank's up there. Um, you know, going down the list of what some of our guests said, Coach Turner, Clint Turner said Patton. I've never seen Patton. That's a great movie. Shaner said Goodwill Hunting. It's all right. I, I've tried to, but I always catch it in the middle, and that's one where I need to see the beginning again. Damn. Um, yeah. Hollis said Rambo. I have, believe it or not, I've never. I've seen bits and pieces of Rambo. I'm I've never seen the I'm surprised Rocky didn't get a mention. I, I am, but I'm not. Jeffrey Drake, I knew wasn't a big movie guy, right. but Airplane, that, that, that sounds Airplane's about right. comedic, yeah. I, knew, I had a hunch Tombstone from John Shadowins, just because I think that was in a signature somewhere at one time, the right. Andrew Huckleberry. Yep. Um, Brother America, of course, Caddyshack, and, and The Getaway, Bruce Dickey said Dazed and Confused. That's one I'll stop and watch. And people are always amazed. I like those types of movies, Days and Confused, Half Baked, things of that nature. But yet, I'm not that type. I'm too straight laced. But yeah. I do love those movies. But Back to the Future has got to be mine. We hope you'll chime in on Twitter at WMIX Sports or Facebook WMIX Sports. But Back to the Future, Shawshank. I mean, and there's some like dumb movies. I love dumb movies. Like, and one that's one that's getting up my list, and you're going to wonder about me after I say this is 13 going on 30 with Jennifer Garner from 04. I'm a Mark Ruffalo guy. I'm just not. I'm not big into the kill gory blood, knock like your head laugh. off, shoot him up movies. I like to go either and see. You know, another one uh, is Bad Boys and Bad Boys Two. Yes, with Will Smith. And How about crew. my girl? Uh, oh, Independence Day is another good oh, one. I oh, can Dwayne, watch. Mrs. Dwayne Wade right now are contemplating it. Yeah, yeah uh, Gabrielle Union. Yeah. And Bad Boys 2 is phenomenal in that. Yes. Will Smith's my guy. But I, I, most people right today are probably going home to watch college football or going major out league. to watch football. I forgot yes. Major League. Yes. Not major. two and three, but I can Major do two. League one. Three, I can do three two. was awful. But I will go home and watch movies and, and get a little break from sports. I'm still trying to get into college college football again this year but it's all sports man there you go that's our discussion for this week that's our wmix social media question plenty of broadcast coming your way game six of the nlcs will be tomorrow night Six ten will be your pregame on wmix fm noon is your broadcast time tomorrow for st louis rams football they will welcome the green bay packers you can hear that right here on am 940 also here on am 940 tuesday night the mountford and lady rams head to that central Area regional they have the annies it'll be seven o'clock tuesday night video online at MyWithersRadio.com. We hope you enjoyed our lineup today. We'll be back next week here on WMIX after the 8 o'clock news. This is the Saturday Sports Show presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. And this is AM 940, WMIX, Mount Vernon, Marion, Paducah, Peoria, a free service from Withers Broadcasting, CNN News, now.